Today we're gonna to talk about a collection of some of my favorite EQs, the Pultec collection in the Universal Audio series. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome to the series on the Pultec EQs. This is one of my favorite EQs to use on not only music production, but also in mastering. It's a great EQ. It's very hard to make these things sound bad. When you put them on something, they make things just sound good. The reason for that is because they are broad EQ moves. So they can be used for a wide variety of applications as well. This makes it very unique. And there's a classic trick that I'm going to get into later called the Pultec Punch that a lot of people like to use on their kick drums. So first of all, let's go over an overview of what these units look like. At the top here, you see the EPQ-1A. This is the most standard Pultec you'll see in most studios, especially the hardware versions. And it's pretty simple to use. Let's go over an overview of all of the different Pultecs real quick before we get into some of the tips and tricks with this. First of all, moving from left to right, you have an in and out switch right here. The next three knobs right here, this triangle, is your low shelf section. And you have a boost and an attenuation, and then you can choose your frequency right here. So 20, 30, 60, and 100. Now these next three knobs right here, this is your high, high boost or high cut area. And not to be confused, this attenuation knob is not related to this high frequency. This attenuation knob is related to this high frequency shelf. So you have a high shelf here at 20, 10, and 5, which is 20,000 hertz, 10,000 hertz, and 5,000 hertz, or 5 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz. So this attenuation knob is connected to this this switch right here. Okay, moving into the next section is these three knobs. And what these three knobs are related to is a mid-range boost. There is no attenuation in this section. You can pick your frequencies here. You have everything from three to 16K. And the beautiful thing about this is you can pick how wide the Q or narrow it is. If you want a narrow, narrow Q or bandwidth, you would go to sharp. And then the more you move this over, the broader it gets. And so you just have a boost option. Some people confuse this attenuation knob as being related to this high frequency switcher, which it's not. The actual attenuation knob affects this high shelf here on the right. And so you have 20,000, 10,000, and 5,000. And this is going to just shelf down the high frequencies. And then you have an on and off switch right here, and you have a level control here. Now, this is the EPQ-1A, the non-legacy version. Uh, there is a legacy version of this right here, which is the first Universal Audio plugin. It's laid out exactly the same. Now, the next one that I want to go and get into is the Pultec filter. It's the HLF3C, high low filter. So you have a low cut off here, pretty simple and unexplanatory. It goes from off to 2000 Hertz. So you're just filtering everything out. It's basically a high pass. And then you have a low pass filter here or a high cut and you have off all the way down to 1.5 kilohertz or 1500 Hertz. Very simple, very easy to use. And once again, you have your in and out switch right there. The next one is the MEQ-5. This is the mid-range section of the Pultec. Same deal here. You have an in and out switch. You have a peak knob here for the low mids, which go up to the mids from 200 to 1000 Hertz. You have a dip, which is a cut, and it goes from 200 to 7000 and a peak once again in the upper mids from 1.5 kilohertz to 5,000 hertz. So 1,500 hertz to 5,000 hertz or 1.5 kilohertz to 5 kilohertz. On off switch and then level adjustment. And then last but not least in the legacy edition which come with a lot of the UA stuff automatically, you have the Pultec Pro which is basically the EPQ-1A legacy and the MEQ-5 Legacy all-in-one. So if you wanna use a EQ that has all of it, it's right here. Now, one thing to note is the newer versions, the three here on the left that I showed you, are more accurate replicas of the hardware. So if you're going for something 
then go for those. But they're going to take up more CPU. The legacy stuff takes less CPU, so that's something to keep in mind. Now, what I want to show you about these EQs is the actual curves. And in this website, I found the Poltec plots. And this is great because it shows you the actual curves. And so you can see here on the MEQ5, you can actually see what these curves are doing. And so the low peak right here at 200 hertz, you see the 700 hertz, and you see each adjustment. And then the mid dip, you can see how much it drops down and what the curve looks like. And the reason why I'm showing you this is I want to get down here to the EPQ1A because one of the common tricks that I'm going to show you that people like to use with the kick drums is the, the pull or they call the pull tech punch. When you're using a pull tech, typically what you're going to be doing is you're going to be boosting and this is the level of the boost. But what a lot of people forget about, let's scroll back up to this attenuation is you have the attenuation. A lot of people like to boost and then attenuate a little bit. And what that actually does is it gives you this type of shape here and this type of shape, it, it enhances it's almost like as if uh, opposite of a resonance knob on a synth, but it, what it does is it enhances that boost because it's dipping down at, at the attenuated mark, which is a little bit higher than the specified frequency spectrum you've selected. This is a low boost cut at 100 hertz. So if the low boost is happening at 100 hertz, this is happening closer to maybe 150, 200 hertz. 10, 2, 10, 3. So yes, this would be around 300, I believe. And yeah, so it's hard to exactly pinpoint where that happens, but that's the beautiful thing about the pull tech. And then you can see the high shelf. So if you want to take a look at this, this is the UA webzine from 2004, July index 4.html. I'll leave you a link down below to this, but it's a great resource if you're looking to see the pull tech curves on the Universal Audio plugins. Okay, let's get into some examples with the pull tech so you can see what these curves are doing. I've got a signal generator here just producing some pink noise. It's just making that so you can hear what it sounds like. And I want to show you what happens. When I turn this first one on, you'll notice that the EQ changed slightly. So just by turning it on, you're going to get an automatic difference in your sound. And that's important to note. Now, Let's talk about the curve. So if I boost this up, you're going to see 30 hertz is now increasing. And as you can see, it's a very broad type of boost. And if I attenuate this, now you're seeing at around 200, 300 hertz, it's dipping down. And that's that pull tech punch trick I was trying to explain earlier. And so as you move this, you're going to see that that frequency shifts and so does that that dip that's going along with it. Now these are extreme boosts and cuts. What most people do is they'll probably stay between the three and six boost range and then they'll attenuate a little under that. So they might, if you're boosting six, you might attenuate three to four, maybe five. Some people do exact numbers and you just gotta go with what sounds good. So let's take a look at the other section. Let's boost at 8K and you can see it's a very very broad boost even at the sharpest point. If I increase this bandwidth, it actually lowers the boost and makes it a little bit wider. And so that is the beautiful thing about these EQs is it's hard to mess up because you're so limited in your options that most whatever you do is going to sound good with these things. Now I advise you to try to be a little sparing with your boosts you know these things are very easy to overuse so be cautious with that now if you take a look at the shelf if i attenuate the shelf it's going to attenuate everything around 10k but even so and you notice this does not affect that i want you to pay attention even though it's supposed to be cutting around 10k it's still a broad stroke if i move this up to 20 even 10k is still getting affected See that a little bit? So if I move this down to five, 5,000 Hertz, now you see it's starting to drop. And it, it it's coming almost even at 2,000 Hertz. So it's a very broad type EQ. And if I bypass this, everything goes flat. Let's take a look at the HLF3C. This one is just your basic filter. And if I just move the low cut, you're going to see it's just going to cut that all right out. 
your standard high pass and your standard low pass here on the right, same thing. Very simple to use. These are preset frequency sections, so they're, you know, you really can't go wrong. These are great frequencies to adjust things at. That's the beautiful thing about these EQs. MEQ5. So MEQ5 is the mid range one, and same thing. Let's peak this at 200 hertz. Notice how two, 300, all of it got affected a little bit at 100. And as you can see, you move this up, it's just moving right along that frequency spectrum. And it's a very broad type stroke. It's, it's not a sharp EQ. That's the beautiful thing about this. Dip at 700. Let's let this finish up and flatten back out. There we go. Dip at 700. Boom, there it is. Very, very, very broad cut right there. And you could just see two, three, five, seven, 1,000, 1,500, two, three, four. These are all important sections of the frequency spectrum. So if you're a beginner, the good thing about these EQs is you've got limited choices. And then you have the peak right here. Once again, it's the same thing. Let's go all the way up. And you see it's just another broad, broad stroke. Now, I don't need to get into the Pro. It's exactly the same, and this one is exactly the same as well. So let's get into examples with the Pultec. Okay, I've got a session opened up with one of my latest Fresco Bar productions. This is not mastered. It's just in the production stage. I'm still working on it. It's not released. But I have this first section looped up, and I want to go over some use cases with the Pultec. The first one is you can use a Pultec on your master. So I'm going to just go ahead and put on the Pultec EPQ-1A. This could be on a stereo bus, say your drums, or on your master. If you wanted to put it on, I do use the Pultec during mastering, and I did a video recently on how to master your own music where I show you how I use the Pultec a little bit. Uh, I don't get into the specifics, but I'll leave you a link up above. And here's the song. Here's before the pull tech. I haven't done anything, but remember, when you put these on, you automatically get a little bit of altering of your sound. So maybe I just want to give that a little crispness. You know, you could add some of those highs. Maybe you want to add some lows. This is before and after. Gave it a lot more punch. Those broad brush strokes are, are beautiful. So that's one thing you could do. Another thing you could do is on your drums, you could, like I said, if you wanted to just affect your drums, maybe you bust some of your stuff to a bus here. Let's just pretend I'm doing this and put that same pull tech. So you could use it as a bus EQ as well if you'd like but you might want to use it individually. So I'm just gonna ungroup that. Now let's talk about that pull tech punch trick. Here's my kick drum. I've got, it's a little shorter, but what the common thing to do with the kick drum here is just boost and then attenuate. And notice how much more low end presence I got from that. Let's actually take a spectrum analyzer and take a look at what this is doing. I wanna show you guys how this actually affects the sound. So that's before, and as you can see, it's dropping down. It just boosted that whole low end region. Now you do need to be careful with not overdoing this because if you do overdo it, it's going to cause too much low end buildup. So be cautious when using this, but it's a great tool. Another thing you could use this on would be your snare. So here's a clap, clap and snare. We've got I'm gonna put this back to default. You might wanna use the mid-range one 
or even the Pro Legacy on your claps and snares. What I'd recommend maybe is to give it a little more snap. And then you could take out some of that low mid. Make it stand out a little more, make your low end a little more present. That's another common trick to do with the pull tech. Another use case that you could use the pull tech for would be on your bass. And as you can see right here, I already have one. And I did the same thing with 100 hertz, just at two boost and attenuate. Before and after. So those are some use cases you could use the Pultec for. I also recommend using it on guitars and synths and other instruments. You really just need to play around. You can use the, the filter ones, the high and low pass filter as just a filter if you wanted to automate that on and off. There's some really great use cases for use with the Pultec. So if you're looking for an analog recreation EQ that sounds really good and is easy to use, this is one of my favorites. Hope that helps you out. If you have any questions about the Pultec collection, be sure to leave me a comment down below. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and the bell notification will keep you up to date. My name is Freddie from Distinct Mastering, and have a great day.